Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of The Breeze, Breezeway Productions, The Breeze, where we bring you the latest in independent films and film festival news. And we're excited to talk today about Stevie Van Zant, uh, The Disciple, which is going to be a new documentary coming out on HBO. And we have with us director Bill Tech to talk about it. How are you, Bill? Alex, thank you for having me on. I'm thrilled to be on. Thank you. Uh, well, yeah, we're glad to have you on the show, and we're looking forward to talking about uh, Stevie Van Zandt, The Disciple. Uh, so tell me a little bit about it. It's a documentary about uh, Stevie, who people may know him from The Sopranos, Silvio Dante. They may know him from the E Street Band. They may know him from his music career, where he was billed as Little Steven. But his life is so kind of, it's one of those characters in, in American pop culture where you know who the guy is, but you may not know the whole story, which I think always makes for an interesting doc, ideally. And so yeah. people may not know that Silvio Dante helped free Nelson Mandela and bring about the end of apartheid. Uh, they may not know that um, little Steven, the musical artist, is also, you know, the guy that created the first streaming show or that had the first branded satellite radio station. Um, all the different music that he's produced and arranged and written from Southside Johnny to Darlene Love, Ronnie Spector, um, Lone Justice. I mean, I could go on and on. Um, so I think, and of course his role in the E Street Band and with his own solo career. So I think what I wanted to do was take a, a unique American character and just show people, this is a radical dude. Look at this body of work and look at this fascinating human being. Yeah, that definitely a very interesting to learn about his early life and then growing up and then you know you move into the chapters one being music the other one how he got engaged with politics as as he got older and he's traveled all over the world. You you break up the doc into different chapters. How 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 many how did you decide to like label these chapters when you're putting it together? Yeah, I think those old um those old kind of filmmaking things, you know, I know that you have a passion for filmmaking and you've been involved in films and um you know, I feel like silent movies still still help us a lot, still teach us a lot. So I thought those chapter breaks were so key to let the audience know, okay, you can relax. That part of the story is over. Here comes something else because his life is – there's so much stuff. There's so many careers, and he has so many different names. He's little Steven. He's Mammy Steve. He's – you know, and there's such – so much information and the movie's very dense also with 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 graphics and it, it it tries to move fast and i think you need those chapter breaks to let the audience know okay don't worry about the past don't worry about that we're going to go into a new chapter now and um we'll give you all the information that you need you're in good hands you know i think it just helps the audience relax and and um intake the information how many times have you seen him in concert? I know that he played for a very long time. He's from Asbury Park. You know, did you get to see him in some of the, some of those venues during that during that time when he was performing? You know, I'm a Miami boy, believe it or not, and so I would just read about it. And by the time I saw uh, the E Street Band, he wasn't even in the E Street Band anymore. So I would just get like bootleg tapes, like Eddie Vedder talks about in the movie, having this bootleg of him at the Rock Palace show and. Um, and so in, I would, in, in, I guess, Germany. Um, and so I would, I would, I was such a fan um, that even when I became a documentarian, you know, I would just kept after him and after him to try to let me make this movie. And then it's funny, the first TV shows that I saw, because he didn't perform his own music for 20 years. Yeah. Were when I was making the doc. And then, of course, I went on tour with him in his fancy rock star airplane and got to film him all over the world in, in Dublin and, UK and, and all over America. So that was fun. I saw a lot of Stevie shows. Awesome. Yeah. I, I, I've watched the concerts as well. I think that it's, it's pretty awesome that he was able to perform with such flair and vibrance and character and what a character, like his personality. And like, also I was curious like about his fashion sense the, the, the he, you never know what he's going to come out with when it comes to like his wardrobe. I wanted to dive into that a little bit. Have, did you like, how do, how do you know what he's going to put on like with his style? Because his style changes so radically from when he was there during his musical era to how people saw him when he was in The Sopranos. You know, like how, how did he how did he do that? How did they come up with that style? What's funny, man, is that he is really that dude. I mean, he is that dude. Like I've, I've you know, when I was on tour with him, you know, I'd go and he'd be like, be like, Steve, you want to get a coffee? He's like, yeah, sure, man, come by. And he comes out of the room. He's little Steven. Each toenail is painted a different color. And his wife is also very, very rock and roll. These guys kind of grew up going to the Cafe Wa to see Hendrix. They really just like rock and roll is the most important thing. And they live it 
seven. Their home, which I was lucky enough to go to, is like that. Yeah. They're dressed like that all the time. Like there's no like downtime and he's just wearing a polo shirt. That's not a thing. Um so it's trippy. And we just see right in the beginning of the film, two, three minutes in, Springsteen comments on he had his purple paisley tie and a couple minutes later gary u.s bond says you never know where his style was gonna go and i remember screening it um when we watched the screening the other night stevie hadn't seen the movie and he's like you got into the fashion stuff right away huh and i'm like have you seen how you dress i have have to address it (laughs) so that was pretty fun yeah uh okay so you said that you pursued him for a while to make this doc and that you were chasing after him to say that like hey this i want to make it i want to make it uh, when was the deciding point that he said, okay, let's make this documentary? Uh, 2018. And I had been after him. Uh, I, I don't know if I mentioned that, you know, there was this music writer in my community that would write about him. And and so he, you know, I, as soon as I became a documentarian, I started in 06, where got back. Thank you. We're aware of you. We'll get in touch if we're interested. I tried again after my last film had a little success. And thank you. We're aware of you. No, no. And I just kept trying. And um, I guess I wore him down. Yeah, I guess I just wore it down over the years, you know. And finally, you know, he said, "All right, meet me for a wine." I think his wife helped me convince him. I spoke to his wife as well. I think that helped. Awesome. Well, perseverance is key in this instance, and obviously, you kept pushing and showing for it, and then you ended up going out and making this documentary uh, about his life, which is showcased in chapters, the music era, and then you put also like some amazing characters that were involved in this that talked about him, that talked about you know the separation with Springsteen and the, and the whole time of like going on his own route and then working with records and then like putting together such music with some people that, you know, they pe- wouldn't normally expect to be in the type of music that he makes. Uh, I think that it's, that it's a wonderful doc. I truly enjoyed it. And um, if you can describe this documentary in your own words to audiences, how would you describe it? I'd say it's about a uniquely, um, about a unique American character in the pop culture landscape. I don't know that anybody has had that career where he's been on the one of the most praised TV show and the most praised rock and roll band. And he, he is a pretty important political figure, helped bring down apartheid in South Africa and, you know, created and produced some of the most influential records ever. Then was involved in the first streaming show, then satellite radio. So all these things that impact culture, but I don't think anybody knows, like, it's one guy. There's one guy behind all this stuff. And you know him, you just don't know him. he's doing all these different things. So I thought that is an interesting, interesting thing to make a documentary about. And then, and the more touching aspect, the guy's belief in the power of rock and roll as being this force for good, for, for individual freedom, to kind of be who you really want to be. And yeah. I, I, was, I found it was very touching. For, for those that are out there that are huge Soprano fans, myself being one of them, I, this was very eye-opening to me because I learned more about his music side. Uh, I watched him for every season while he was on The Sopranos. Uh, so tell me a little bit like how you knew that you were going to put that in there, but you didn't want to make it only about that. You showed some clips in the beginning. And like what the difference between who he really was like during his rock and roll eras to go into that character. Uh, I thought that that was pretty fascinating. Do you want to touch on that a little bit? Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I'm a Sopranos fanatic, too. And there's a, a Sopranos doc now that I'm very stoked to see. Um, very stoked. And getting to interview David Chase and, and Vincent Pastore. Thrilled. So I, I remember being home watching. And, and at that time, I was following Stevie's career as a fan. And hadn't, he hadn't done anything for like seven years. You'd look on the early days of the Internet, no information, watching HBO and watch the Sopranos one night. And is that Stevie on there? Like, what? Um and then they'd even play some of his music, like when Gloria Trillo, when Annabelle Ciora dances for Tony, that song Affection, that's a Stevie song. But it, he's not even billed as Stevie, it's just the Lost Boys. And I remember thinking, is that Van Zandt? He's so mysterious with the different names, Miami Steve, you know, yeah. little Steve. And so um, when I got the opportunity to make the documentary, to tell that story of how he came to be on The Sopranos was a thrill. And then, of course, to, to, to sit and listen and see how he used his – his relationship with Springsteen to inform his relationship with Tony, how he kind of, uh, how David Chase cast him by seeing him on the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Yeah, I think it was just kind of, it's just proof that if you just kind of stick to your thing, hopefully the light will come around again and you'll be ready, you know, because he was just trying to promote the rascals who he loved. We're yeah. just going to know that there's a 
David Chase watching and thinking, that guy would be good for my TV show, as Peter Wolf says in the movie. Yeah. I did get a cool call from David Chase. He said, uh, Bill, this is David Chase. I'm like, hello, how did you get my phone, sir? I mean, I was thrilled <laughs> to get the call. Yeah. You know, I don't call like that every day. And he said, um, hey, listen, uh, I was talking to Stevie. Did you interview his brother and sister? And I'm like, no, no, but I'm going to. He's like, well, you should. It's going to be a weird movie if they're not in the movie. I was like, huh. no problem. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. So you know how it is. You know, you don't say no to a call like that. You, next day, we were interviewing the brother and sister, which we would have done anyway, but that, that helped. Yeah, talking about his upbringing and you know where he came from and his journey was just so fascinating to learn about. I, I've learned more about him from watching this doc than I ever knew prior. So it was definitely very informative. And now I have a whole new view of Stevie Van Zandt, disciple. And closing question, disciple. Why, why, like, what, why did you put that into, uh, into the title of the film? Well, you know, I thought he's such a fan of rock and roll. He believes in it so strongly. He experienced it almost as a religion. He wants to keep it alive for people in much the passionate way that, that people approach religion. And, and um, you know, his early bands, and, and now again, you know, it's called Disciples of Soul. And I thought, this guy really is a disciple of rock and roll as this, like, thing that can change the world in a good way. And, and, and I thought the movie goes back and kind of shows you what he's a disciple of, you know, the early rockers, the British invasion, yeah. politics with Dylan. So I thought this is a good, this is appropriate for this, for this film. Awesome. Well, uh, it will be premiering on HBO. Stevie, uh, Disciple will be playing soon. Uh, I want to thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me today. Uh, Director Bill Tech, I appreciate your time and I hope everyone is able to check out the Stevie Van Zandt documentary, Disciple. Alex, thank you so much, man. Thank <laughs> you.